been an avid gamer a lot of my life, so uh, I'd been always kind of toying around with uh, game design programs, I guess, when I was in college. There was, you know, a program called Click and Create and, and uh, things like that. There were really, really simple, simple game design programs because, you know, uh, coding was not ever anything that I studied or anything that I uh, pursued. So Kodu was really appealing to me when they first showed it, and I kind of tracked it before it came out because I was really excited by the idea of uh, a game that did a lot of the uh, hard work for you, and you could kind of just, you know, figure out the rules of how the uh, the program worked, and you know, create your own games from that. So from the day it launched, I was really excited about it, and uh, and jumped in and started, you know, plugging away. Liked it a lot, you know. I mean, I I was really comfortable with the Xbox 360. And uh, I liked um, I liked a lot of the freedom that it gave you to kind of just experiment with different uh, prototypes and things like that. You know, just kind of work on a game mechanic and figure out is this kind of fun? Is this an interesting thing, or is it not an interesting thing? And uh, you know, versus having to write a lot of code or, mm-hmm. or figure out how things were going to just operate. You know, everything just kind of works in its world a bit so you can kind of start to cheat it a little bit more but uh you know all the hard hard work is already done for you you can go very quickly from um from knowing if a game's fun or not without um uh spending tons and tons of time on it you know i mean i remember one of the first things i did was build an aquarium in kodu and put all the little fish characters in there and just kept programming different behaviors into them you know and and uh you know, I'd program it so certain fish would chase other fish and certain fish would eat other fish and then just kind of watch what would happen and then go, okay, is there a game here? I'm not sure. What if I make the X button feed the fish? Uh, so it would drop little apples at the top mm. of the fish tank and then some of the fish would rise up and eat them. And, you know, I spent like a whole night doing that. Uh, well, it was probably like, you know, three or four hours in a night. And at the end of the night, I had a pretty fun little aquarium uh, without doing, without needing to, uh, uh, work that hard at it, I guess, you know, mm. so at the end of the day, it was the speed with which you could kind of just play around with something and go, okay, this is kind of cool. And then you could move on to something else or keep working on it. Well, uh, you know, I mean, I was really, I noticed that when I started with Kodu, a lot of the people that were creating games were creating very, um, isolated games. They were games that, you know, kind of didn't feel that there was a level of progression. It was just kind of, um, uh, you know, you, you did stuff in one stage for a while and then, you know, you died at some point and it was over. So one of the things I really wanted to do when I started playing around with it was, you know, the idea of, okay, well, they're not going to let us link different levels together, but can we create, can I create a bunch of different levels in one game? So that was the core idea behind um, the, the Portal uh, mm-hmm. tribute game, which was, okay, let me just start, you know, very simply, and I, I've been playing Portal recently, so I was, you know, it was on my mind. So I was like, okay, well, I'll take this chunk of stage, and then you'll have to do one mechanic, and then you'll get out of that chunk of the stage, and then you'll get to the next one. And um, and that was really how, you know, that game was a lot of fun for me to design because I designed it. Uh, I, I realized I was creating a lot of the rules that I like to follow in Kodu while creating that game, which was I spent a lot of time on a robust uh, spawn mechanic, which meant, you know, a lot of times you play a game in Kodu and you, you know, you get about 10 seconds into it and the game's really hard and there's a bunch of different buttons to press and all of a sudden you're dead. And I was like, well, okay, I'm probably not going to play this game again. (laughs) So, uh, so I spent a lot of time trying to just develop, you know, and that was probably like three nights of work of just like, okay, how do I make this really, really not frustrating for the kick for the player? You know, whenever they disappear off the board, do they know that they're going to reappear? Do they know that I've made things kind of fair for them. And then, uh, and then after that, it was a lot of fun because, you know, the part of the way I design games is I definitely start really, really bare bones. I start with just flat surfaces. Mm. I don't do any of the, um, kind of environmental stuff and my games are really like sparse anyway. Uh, cause I kind of like it that way, but to just build really, really basically so I can make lots of different adjustments as, as it goes. And then, uh, you know, once I have everything in place and I know that it's a little bit of fun, then, you know, you kind of add little things here and there. Um, But the Portal game was a really, really great uh, learning exercise for me because definitely it was 
uh, learning how to respawn things was a huge part of it. Also, um, uh, it was about how to give Kodu players like tiny little things to learn as they went along so that they'd make it through the whole game. So little things like, okay, the first thing you do, you're, you're in a little tank. Uh, what do you do to get out of the tank? You just touch a little orb and then it takes you out of the tank. Let's say that's the, how portal begins. So you mm-hmm. learn, okay, that's how the first mechanic works. Mm-hmm. You go through portals, which was actually a lot of people, you know, on the forums, once I released the first version of that game, a lot of people didn't even get to that part. <laughs> <laughs> they found, you know, they didn't know what to do inside the tank because I didn't tell them to touch the thing. So I was yeah. like, okay, man, I got to really figure out how to make things simple for people. <laughs> but eventually I released a YouTube video and then people started understanding how to play the game. Um, and then uh, and then it was like, okay, well, what's the next tiny little gameplay mechanic you're going to learn so that you'll stick with it? And the next gameplay mechanic was, okay, now you can fire your own portal. Okay, cool. And then it was just slowly introducing the next mechanic, which one of them was a total surprise, which was that you could fire a little wisp character while you were jumping in the air. And then, uh, you know, if you teleported through that, you'd go even further. Mm. So, um, or, if, or if you, no, pardon me. If you, if you fired and then entered it, the, uh, the momentum of the wisp moving forward would make you go forward further. Mm. So I remember when I got to that gameplay mechanic, it was actually uh, totally accidental that it mm. happened, but I was like, Oh my God, this is actually really fun and really different. Mm. You know, you can't, do it exactly the same way in Portal, so I realized I was doing something a little different, mm. but I was making it its own, like, fun game. And then I was like, okay, well, now I can use UFOs to carry the Wisp. Mm. And by the end of the game, there's a bunch of, there's, like, six or seven or eight different gameplay mechanics that you've learned. You know, fire Wisps, fire while you're moving, you know, or jumping, mm. let other things carry the Wisps. Um, oh, God, a couple other oh, you can make bombs go through them, you know, by setting up the Wisps in different ways, so... I was really excited with the progression of that game because I really felt like, you know, at the end of it, it had a little boss level, but at the end of it, you did all these things uh, that if I tried to introduce it in the first stage, you would have never, ever been able to get through the game. So it was fun to kind of build it that way. Yeah, no, there's definitely a lot of pre-planning. It's definitely uh, mostly on a um, yellow pad where it's just, you know, kind of thinking once I have kind of the core ideas, then... For example, with Portal, it was definitely like, okay, well, let me just draw pictures of what these level progressions are going to be like. Um, With a game like Duel, uh, uh, it was a lot of um, a lot of that. Also, like I draw different pictures, and then I would also just go, okay, what are the things I want the player to change and do as the game goes? Um, So I kind of list it out on paper. Okay, what's the first? Like I said, with with the Portal thing, it's like what's the first mechanic I want you to learn? What's the next mechanic I want you to learn? What's the next way that the gameplay is going to just get tweaked a little bit? Um, but no, it definitely always starts down on a, on a sheet of paper for me. And then it goes to the, um, to the game. And again, it's very, very, I just block it out really, really basically. And I know once I have my respawn mechanic in place, mm-hmm. that the game is going to go way easier. And then uh, to, to do the rest of it, because that's like the, always the hardest part is like, okay, how do, what's going to happen when a player dies? Because I don't want them to just end the game. <laughs> um, so, uh, so I plan it out like that. And then it's just very, very basic, basic, bare bones design. And then, you know, that's it. You know, I try not to peg my resource meter. So I, <laughs> I keep it simple throughout the whole time. Well, this is kind of a bad, I don't know if this is great advice or not, but I, my advice would be <laughs> get it to a certain point. And then kind of get it out there and start sharing with people. Uh, don't kind of sit on it forever because um, you can always refine and always make your game better. And it kind of, it's more, Kodu is more about getting it in the hands of other people who can either tweak it or just advise you, you know, or play around with it. I mean, um, the games that I don't like that I've made in Kodu are the games that took me forever. Or, you know, if it takes me too long and I keep really, really working it, working it, then I know something's probably wrong and I just dump it. Um, so it's more about getting it to a point where it's like, okay, this feels good and this feels satisfying. And, you know, you're not going to, I mean, you probably aren't going to create a really long experience in Kodu. It's just not really designed for that. So it's like make the best, you know, 12 to 15 minute experience you can and uh, and see what happens there.